The upper four-fifths of Okinawa are already in our hands. The principal remaining Japanese strength of more than 50,000 troops has managed to stalemate both the 24th Army Corps and the Marine 3rd Amphibious Corps, which has arrived from the north to support them. From the capital city of Naha, the enemy defense line runs unbroken for four miles like a stone wall to the east coast. Along this line, Marine troops face the concentrated fire of Japanese artillery, which has been the most effective yet encountered in any Pacific operation. Here, our armored units must operate over terrain that is tactically advantageous to the Japanese. Volcanic outcroppings and coral knobs enable the enemy to withdraw from one fortified ridge to another. His cliffside emplacements and observation points command most of the negotiable terrain, comprising a stubborn rat hole defense system which must be probed and overcome point by point. Our artillery delivers heavy fire on the central strong point of the enemy's defense line, the garrison village of Shuri, which is too heavily fortified for frontal assault. Seasonal rains persisting for weeks force curtailment of our artillery action due to the difficulty in maintaining ammunition supply. Virtually all vehicular transport is bogged down by roads that are two to three feet deep in mud. As the rain continues, Many organizations manage to maintain at least a minimum of supply by manhandling small units of food, ammunition, and parts up to the forward area. Mud and rain have spoken. And where there is no other means of delivery is made by regular air drops. With the main one of fury, severely damaged by shell fire, and apparently rendered impassable by weeks of rain, 
The Japanese have withdrawn most of their strength to the eastern side of Shuri to thwart a possible flanking movement from that direction. However, a Marine unit proceeding without heavy support succeeds in breaking the height, opening the way for successful reduction. The strongest above ground fortification on Okinawa was Shuri Castle. This medieval structure, with walls more than five feet thick, withstood over 25 direct hits from our naval gunfire. The citadel was the keystone of the Shuri defense area, 120 acres of village and barracks installations, which were totally destroyed. Outflanked and almost encircled, many of the garrison had been evacuated, leaving a skeleton force which was completely wiped out. With the fall of this garrison, the eastern flank of Naha is exposed, and the main Japanese defense line begins to crumble into pockets. Simultaneous with the assault on Shuri, we were pushing the attack against the western anchor of the enemy defense line, the sea and airport city of Naha. What was soon to develop into a drawn-out siege opens with intense bombardment of the approaches to the city. Advanced Marine units penetrating deep into the outlying suburbs of Naha engage an enemy patrol. As Japanese resistance withdraws within the city proper, our troops advance to secure positions within the suburbs and on the outskirts of the capital. We are denied entry into the downtown districts by the mud flats of the Asato River and the effective observation and fire of the Japanese artillery. <laughs> 